Hey guys, this is Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you how I built my mom this entertainment center. So, if you're ready to get building, let's go. My parents built their house about 20 years ago, and while dad is indifferent, mom is having like a 20 year house crisis, and everything must be repainted and remodeled and restyled. So, you can imagine that I keep getting roped into it. But this time, it was a fun project, and I didn't mind tackling it for her for her living room. I built her an entertainment center with some extra storage and some shelves to make it look a little bit more substantial in her large space versus the little antique red dresser cabinet she used to have for a TV stand. Dad got a big TV, Mom got a big entertainment center, and I got a big project to build. So it's just a win-win for everybody. So I'm going to show you how it came together right here. This project used three and a half sheets of three quarter inch plywood. So the first thing that I did was cut these down to manageable pieces so that I could more quickly assemble everything. I provided a link to the plans with a plywood cut diagram in the description below and also in the blog post linked below as well. Once I had my plywood ripped down, I trimmed these pieces to length to start assembling the two tall skinny side cabinets of this center. In order to move it and get it from my shop to my parents' house, I built this in three sections, two smaller side cabinets and one large center cabinet. I assembled the cabinet carcasses for the side cabinets identically using 3 quarter inch pocket holes and 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Once the two carcasses were together, I cut quarter inch plywood backings to staple onto the back sides. I purchased underlayment plywood for this because it was cheaper, but it was much rougher than the quarter inch birch plywood that I've used in the past, so just a helpful hint, splurge for the birch. It looked, it like, it'll look a whole lot nicer once it's painted. Live and learn, I guess, but now that the cabinets had a back, I began trimming 1x3 and 1x4 boards to put the face frame for these cabinets together. I used pocket holes and screws again to assemble the face frames for these cabinets and you can find all the dimensions and the details of this project in the downloadable plans linked below. I attached the face frames using wood glue and brad nailed them in place. If you wanted, you could also use 3 quarter inch pocket holes and screws to attach this from the inside of the cabinet or simply screw them in on the front and just putty the holes if you plan to paint it. Now it was time to decorate them up with some fancy moldings. Also, if you ever wonder why I don't leave the shop sounds in my video, this is why. It's mostly just singing. Anyway, I attached some crown molding on the tops, some baseboard around the bottom, and some chair rail molding along the middle. Since these cabinets will butt up against the middle cabinet sides, I only wrapped the molding around the front outside corners of these cabinets, and I left the chair rail and baseboard ends where it will meet the middle cabinet beveled at 45 degrees. You'll see why in a later step. I also wanted the chair rail molding to match up between all three pieces of this project so I made sure to measure from the floor and line up the molding on each piece at the same distance from the floor to make sure they will all be on the same level. Does that make sense? At this point in the plans it's time to add shelves and a door but I did things a little out of order and I moved on to the middle cabinet and just made all the doors and shelves at the same time later in this project. The side cabinets were 12 inches deep, but the middle cabinet is 16 inches deep. So I cut my 16 inch wide plywood pieces to length to start building the middle cabinet carcass. This thing was huge, so I couldn't fit it in my K5 pocket hole jig because the pieces hit the ceiling. So I used my 320 jig instead. I drilled holes as needed in order to assemble this carcass.
Since this cabinet was so huge, I had to assemble it on the floor and maneuver it around between my husband's tractor and my workbench. Clearly, I need a bigger shop. Once the cabinet carcass was assembled, I stapled it back onto the bottom cabinet portion of the piece. If I put it back on the entire piece, there would be a seam and I just didn't want to deal with a seam, so I only put it back on the lower portion. Once we got it in place in my parents' living room, I don't think it's noticeable, but if you wanted to put a backer on the whole thing, feel free. Now, just like with the side cabinets, I assembled a face frame next and attached using wood glue and brad nails. This wasn't so bad, except again, I had to assemble it on the floor. And now I know that when I get a new shop, I need more floor space and taller ceilings. <laughs> Maybe one day. Once the face frame was attached, next was trim. Because I wanted the molding on all three pieces to line up close to each other, I thought that it was easiest at this point before attaching the trim on the middle cabinet to put the side cabinets next to the middle cabinet like it will be when we get it in mom and dad's living room. I attached crown molding along the top of this cabinet on the front and on the sides, then attached baseboard and chair rail molding. Notice how the ends where the cabinets meet were left at 45 degrees. So they fit snugly together when the entire piece is in place. The crown didn't need that since the cabinets are different heights, so they don't actually meet at the top. Now that all three cabinets were built and trimmed out, I moved on to making the doors. I won't go through the entire process of door making since I've got a separate video on that, but I assembled the doors just like I did for my sister's kitchen cabinets with 1x3s, quarter inch plywood, wood dowels, mitered corners, and a roundover on the inside of the frame. While the glue dried on the doors, I cut the shelves for the cabinets and prepared to paint. The shelves for the small cabinet were just 3 quarter inch plywood pieces cut to fit, but the shelf that will go above the TV was really long, so to give it a little extra support to keep it from bowing in the middle, I used pocket holes and screws to attach a piece of 1x3 to the front of that piece of plywood. Then I painted. I didn't take a video of that, it was awful, terrible, I hate painting, but I did it for my mom. I used the roller and a brush to apply one coat of primer to the cabinets, doors, and shelves, then applied two to three coats of regular latex paint. Once that insanity was finished, I drilled shelf pin holes to place the shelves inside the cabinets. You could totally drill these before painting, but I think it's cleaner to do it after because then you don't get paint into the holes after you drilled them. The last thing was adding the doors. I used a concealed hinge jig to drill the holes into the doors to screw in the hinges. Then I attached the door pulls. Mom let me pick out the pulls that I wanted and I may have gone a little overboard finding the biggest ones that I could. Now, these doors were designed to be inset, but inset concealed hinges for face frames are really hard to find and very expensive. So I cheated a little and I used inset hinges for frameless cabinets and used a spacer block inside the cabinets. It's not exactly pretty, but I didn't realize these hinges would be so hard to find until after I'd already made the doors and the cabinet. I screwed these blocks in place so that I could mount the doors to these instead of the face frame. It works, but in hindsight, I may should have just made these doors overlay instead. Live and learn. Lastly, I added some scrap wood stop blocks to the bottom of the side cabinets to keep the door from folding into the cabinet too far.
Once it was finished, Dad came over and we loaded it up and took it to their house. We got it set in place and I screwed the three pieces together in a couple places just to keep them nice and tight. Then we added the shelf pins and shelves where mom wanted them and once the TV was finally hooked back up, dad was happy too. This was a huge project, but it was really fun to put together. Nothing too complicated, just really large in size. I think it looks great in mom and dad's living room, much better than the tiny old cabinet they used to have. Plus it gives them plenty of storage for books, DVDs, whatever, and mom has more surface area to display her decor. So if you're interested in building your own, be sure to check out the blog post tutorial linked below and the downloadable plans as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.